Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spare Tech and welcome back to your channel. And today we are going to be taking a look at the Crow Pi 2. So let's get started. Now I do want to thank Electro for sending me over the Crow Pi 2 and I'll leave all the links down in the description below. Now I'm a huge fan of this product that's because I own the first version of the Crow Pi. Now if you haven't seen it before I'll leave a link to the first version of this guy. I'm glad they actually upgraded to the version 2 because they upgraded some of the stuff on this guy that really need upgrading. Now I've used this the first version for quite some time already. Anytime that I need to program something or use a module real quick, I will actually whip out the Crow Pi. As well as I actually taught my son how to do scratch programming with the Crow Pi 1. We actually came out with about two games. One which is just a little side scroller. The second game is still in development. It's a little tower defense game that we're creating where ants invade the house and we have spiders to defend off the ants. So yeah, we're still working on that. He's doing a lot of mock-ups and spider drawings and stuff like that. So it's pretty fun. Now, I'm really glad that they did come out with the version 2 because not only do you get more modules on this guy, the biggest problem with the version 1 was the screen size. Now, that was a 7-inch screen while this one is actually an 11.6 inch, which is way much easier on my eyes. For him, I think it's fine, but for me, I really had to struggle looking through that screen just to try to help him code. Now what you get with this is actually a laptop style Raspberry Pi setup with all the modules built in. Now this is the first look. I actually have not opened this yet so I don't even know what I'm expecting. But I know it's going to be great things because I really like the first product. So let's dive into it. So in the front of the box you actually see uh, there's actually different color schemes on this guy. So you could get a dark version or the light version. I believe this might be the silver version. Uh, turning over to the back it actually explains what you're getting which is about 22 modules and a bunch of other stuff and I do like the fact that now the keyboard is built into the system compared to what it was before because this was just a wireless USB that you have to you couldn't use it as a laptop I could say this you had to place on a desk and use it that's what I'm trying to say this one you can actually fully use it like a laptop and or you know take it apart and use it as something else now moving forward if you take a look at the front of the box again it looks like they have their own little operating system which is something i will be testing in the future i want to see how intuitive it is to use this operating system and what it comes with as far as teaching kids how to stem now keep in mind my son is eight years old so he's in second grade and they're just starting to do stem projects and uh, these little kits is actually perfect for him for learning how to do like if and or for statements loops and stuff like that So I'm opening this up right now and we're gonna see what we have I'm gonna put this down on the floor and the first thing you notice is they come with these like minecraft little Foldable things so you can actually make little blocks with them. It comes with a bunch of them actually TNT blocks gold uh, the instruction manual so uh, on the first version you actually really needed to keep the instruction manual with you because they have little swatches uh, to identify which module you're planning to use. I'm um, just taking a look at the instruction booklet for the second one and it doesn't seem, I don't know, I have to go through it. It doesn't seem like they have anything like that yet. Now, next up we have um, stepper motor, little coins, another motor, uh, fan motor, they have a lot of modules. Mod this is a moisture sensor. They have a mouse. So you actually, instead of the touchpad that comes with the, I'm going to call it a laptop or pie top, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, um, it has an ex external mouse. I could see that they finally upgraded the cord to an actual regular like prong cord, you could say. Um, the first version actually had a terrible cord. It was only like three feet long and you couldn't, you had to really be next to an outlet to use it. This one, at least it gives you a little bit of leeway. It, with the distance and it's a lot easier to plug in. Um, they also come with a lot of GPIO wires and LEDs and buttons and stuff like that. Remote control, uh, micro USB card, a module for the Raspberry Pi 3 because I believe the Raspberry Pi 4 is in this guy. The module is uh, the HDMI and they have some NF NFC, NFC. Yeah, near field communication, NFC uh, cards. And they come with two controllers that you could actually use this for RetroPie in case you're getting tired of coding. And this is the laptop itself, which is a pretty decent size. It's actually not, it's a little bulky, but it's not that bad as far as weight goes. Um, they also come with this micro USB reader, screwdriver, and another screwdriver. And I think that is it. Let's open this guy up. You see, I didn't even open this yet. All right, now that we got this to open, 
it looks just like a little tiny laptop, like an 11 inch laptop, just pretty thick to be a laptop, but it, nonetheless, it's actually a pretty decent size. I'm gonna open this up and there we have an 11 inch screen. I actually really like the screen. It's also a 1080 panel. So you're gonna be very satisfying. Uh, you're going to be able to see a lot of the stuff that's going on on here. 11, it's a 1080, 11 inch IPS panel with a webcam on top and some sort of like laptop type keyboard on the bottom with touchpad. Now this has a little bit of a fitment issue, which they know about. They actually told me about it and it's going to be fixed on the releases. But uh, since I got the early bird special or the early bird model, uh, there are some little things that um, need fixing on the keyboard. That's fine. If you open up the bottom, this is where it reveals all the sensors. And this actually could still work because it's Bluetooth and you could place this on a desk and use it as a keyboard and a mouse. So I really like the fact that they turned it this way. If I needed to play games or uh, just code something really quick without having to use the modules, I still could turn it into a laptop mode and use it this way. Now, looking at the externals, uh, you got a headphone jack right over here, uh, volume up, volume down, the power button, uh, 12 volt DC in, and a USB DC in as well. So you could take a look at that. Now, in the back, there's this little con uh, compartment. So this compartment actually allows you to stick in all these modules and store it so you don't have to carry the box with you every time you need some wires or anything like that. Also, if you don't use the tray itself like this, they actually have a battery module that you could fit into the back and then you could plug the battery module directly to the one of the five volt plugs on the side. So this could be a complete laptop without battery which is great because this guy didn't have any battery at all and there's no place to put it in. Now on the bottom there's another slot and this is where you could actually replace the Pi. So I'm going to slide this open and oh wow it's actually got a memory card in there already, SD card in there already and you have full access to the Raspberry Pi 4 and if you need to replace it with another version of Raspberry Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 3 this is where you go ahead and do it. It seems like there's a little bit of space two so you could actually put stuff in here no probably not that's where you would go in and uh grab the pie and do whatever you need to do and you still have full access to all the usb and ethernet on the back of the port so that's pretty cool they also have a little ribbon here just as for the monitor but yeah that's fine now checking out the inside of this guy you have your smaller breadboard than the previous version but it has all the leds on what the gpios that you're using uh, you also have a fan to keep the Raspberry Pi 4 cool. A uh, bunch of sensors over here. Is it anything? The joystick's pretty new. And a few other things. Actually, yeah, you don't have... The, another grime on the old version, uh, if I'm going to show you, is that anytime that I wanted to switch between modules, say if I want to use the ultrasonic module or the LED or the segmental light or NFC or whatever it is, the 8x8 matrix, anytime I need to do something with that, you have to play around with these jumpers. And this one doesn't seem to have any jumpers at all. So... I don't know how that's gonna work. That's very interesting to me. And they have way better buttons. Oh my God, the old ones used to be like tactiles. These are actually like soft. It doesn't make that like click, click, click noise for these little tiny buttons up on the top. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna show you real quick their old version, which I am so glad they fixed a lot of. So one, you see these little jumper pins on the bottom over here? This whole like row of jumper pins. That is what you need to like keep adjusting so you could use particular modules. And they have like tactile buttons that make a lot of sound. And the power is in the inside and not on the outside. So yeah, that's pretty cool. The amount of updates that they did to, to this guy. That's about it as far as how the look of this guy is. I think they did a really good job on this new model, especially having compartments for drawers, uh, easy access to the Raspberry Pi 4, as well as removing the jumper settings for particular models. I'm pretty sure you have to code it in there somehow to say like, hey, use this instead. That's a lot easier than trying to figure out the jumper combinations without the manual. So I do enjoy this setup much better. And I believe right after this, I'm going to show my son this so he could start getting into playing around with scratch programming on this new guy. Now let's power it up and see what it comes with. Okay, here we go. I just plugged it in. But as you notice, it doesn't power it on right away, which I do like. You do have to press the power button on the side and everything starts to light up. 
and you can see the fans kicking in. Raspberry Pi logo, what is that? No, the Electro logo has HDMI and now it's loading the Raspberry Pi. And so it got a little bit of a noise because of the fan that's kicking in, but... Oh, that's pretty cool. Is this a touch panel? No, it is not a touch panel. It's got big icons, uh, Project, Minecraft, Python, AI, Learning Center. Now, this new model, so it actually has like 90 plus projects on here where you could actually learn how to program and stuff like that. So for anyone who wants to, who are interested in programming or learning all these modules and stuff like that, this is probably a really good beginner's guide to it. Now, again, I am going to do a full deep dive into the operating system on another video, but I just wanted to see how it looks with the panel and this thing running. Uh, so far, it seems to be pretty good. Uh, the mouse is not automatically connected, so I think I have to power it on. So there's a micro USB charger for this guy just to charge the keyboard. So my mistake, the keyboard is actually powered by a USB dongle right over here that comes with the mouse. So the mouse has a USB dongle that you would connect everything to and then the keyboard would be instantly hooked up that way. The touch is actually pretty responsive. Just tapping it works pretty well. They have a bunch of stuff on the desktop that you can already, already play with. But again, I'm going to review this desktop completely at a separate time because I want to be able to do a screen capture and you can follow along on what's going on. But otherwise, it looks really, really good. Well, that's it for now. But like I said, I will be checking out the operating system on a later video because I'm very interested to see what they did to make this more uh, user friendly as far as the projects go, how to use the modules on the keyboard itself. So that will be on a later video. If you guys have any questions about this, leave it down in the comments below. And again, everything we talk about will be down in the description as well. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.